manifestation of the word Yahweh was when God was about to create Adam. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So the covenant name of God is actually Yahweh. Jehovah. Amen. So every time you see that name, it's a reminder of God's love, God's mercy, God's redemption. Hallelujah. And God provided the sacrifice for it by Himself. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Turn the Bible quickly to the book of Hebrews. Hebrews chapter number 13. We're going to read verse 20. Hebrews number 13, verse 20. Are you there? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now the God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant. I'll read again. Now the God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant. This morning we're going to be talking about covenants. Hallelujah. Now, as a child of God, as a son of God, or a daughter of God, if you don't understand the covenant that you have with your father, things might not work for you except by fluke. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You will not get constant and steady results in life. You might not grow steadily except you understand the covenant that you have with God. Now, in the Bible, there are close to 15 or more covenants that are mentioned. But we have two basic covenants. Amen? Amen. Close to 15 or more covenants that are mentioned in the Bible. For example, you have a covenant with David, and God said to David, as surely as the sun is up there in the moon, in, in the star in the sky and, and the stars and the moon are there when you wake up in the morning you come out and you see that the light the sunlight is there it says as surely as that is my blessings will not leave you that's a covenant hallelujah yes, that's a covenant he made a covenant with Abraham he made a covenant with Noah hallelujah yes, praise God these are our covenants. But we're not going to base our, 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 our talk on those covenants. We're going to base our talk on the two primary covenants. The old and the new. Because every other covenant rests rest on those two covenants. The knowledge of those two covenants. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Amen. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Bless your word and direct our hearts to be open to your word. As your word comes with power, with precision, and with and with elimination, let our understanding be open Amen. in Jesus' mighty matchless name. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I'll read Hebrews 13, verse 28. Now the God of peace to the the God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep through the blood of the everlasting covenant. Now, every other covenant were not everlasting. The old covenant was not everlasting. Now the covenant, the Mosaic covenant is what we call the old covenant because it's, it's a covenant that had the law. Praise God. The covenant that had the law. The covenant, the Mosaic covenant actually is, is, a, is, is a, an offshoot of the promises of Abraham. Glory to God. 
the promises of Abraham. Now, the Mosaic Covenant, which we call the Old Testament or the Old Covenant, has its powers. Amen? Amen. It has its powers. It has its place there. It's, it's important. But it's, it has fulfilled everything that it was designed for. Hallelujah. It has fulfilled everything it was designed for. Now the old, the old covenant, what we call the old covenant, the Mosaic covenant, where the law was designed to bring man to their knees, to bring men to their knees. Hallelujah. So that man will come to a place where he knows that he needs redemption. And redemption will only come from sacrifice. Because when Adam sinned in the garden of Eden, God came and said, this one can only be taken away by the shedding of blood. So there must be a sacrifice. Hallelujah. The last Sunday, if you're not around, go to YouTube or go to my page on Facebook and get the message out. From there, from last Sunday, we began to talk about the priesthood. Now the old priesthood has its blessings and has its power. Do you know that in the old priesthood, the priest can come and look at the sacrifice and say, no matter how beautiful the sacrifice is, the priest looked at the sacrifice and said, this sacrifice cannot pass. And God in heaven stands by the word of the priest that this sacrifice cannot pass. Hallelujah. What's that? That's power. That's power. Amen. Under the old, old co covenant, God told Israel, He said, if you keep the rudiments of this covenant, if you keep the, the if you obey and listen to this covenant and do everything that the covenant says to do, I will bless your waters and I will bless your land. That means there will be no disease in your land. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Then he went on to say that none of these plagues that follow the Israelites will follow each will that follow the Egyptians will follow you. Glory to God, can I get water? Will follow you. Amen. Amen. Now what's that? That's power. That's power. He said, no. Hallelujah. He said you will not cast your seed on dead waters. That's the Old Testament. That's the Old One. In the Old One, it said that every time you call in repentance, my word will come and heal you. Those are powerful statements under the Old Covenant. But that covenant was not good enough. Hallelujah. A leprous man under the old covenant would take a sacrifice and go to the high priest. And the high priest would take the dove, kill it, two doves, kill it, and, and between when he kills the dove and perform the rituals, and by the new day, which is the eighth day, the leprous will be completely clean from the man. That's all that the old covenant is that more powerful. But yet, God said the old covenant is not it. He said the body am I prepared for you. That covenant, as beautiful as it as, as it was, was not everlasting. That means it can be broken at any time. And watch, every time that Israel break the covenant, they go into captivity. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. For bless his name, we have a better covenant now. Amen. Hallelujah. And it's an everlasting covenant. Let me show you something. Hebrews 10. Glory to God. Hebrews saying, are you there? 
We'll read five. We'll read seven, we'll read nine, and we'll read ten. Wherefore, when he came into the world, he said, Sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not, but a body has he prepared for me. Do you know what that means? He just said that sacrifices and offerings are worlds. Now, what was he doing? He was putting an aim to the old covenant and he's saying that in the new covenant it's all new. Glory to God. It's all new. All of the new covenant is of God. You don't have a past to play. The only past that you have to play, you played it in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. I thought somebody would take a minute and scream and enjoy the, the benefit of what they have in Christ Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Seven says, Then said I, Lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me to do the will of God. Hallelujah. What's God's will? Say that we are above all things that you leave, leave, you leave continuously, no breaking. You leave in good health and in prosperity. Well, that means under the new covenant, you are not supposed to forsake. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let me show you something. Under the Old Testament, when they are sick, they need to sacrifice an animal. But under the New Testament, you are not supposed to be sick. So you, you don't need to sacrifice any animal because you are not supposed to be sick at all. Hallelujah. Under the old covenant, when they miss it, their land dry out. The water dry out. That means, what it means is that there will be a drought, a cease of financial flow. But in the new covenant, there is no cease of financial flow. There are no droughts, there are no dry. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's why it's called a better covenant. Glory to God. Hallelujah. That's why it's called a better covenant. I'm not supposed to be broke. I'm not supposed to be without money. I'm not supposed to be sick. It's because I don't have the past to play. I cannot break the covenant to make me suffer the punishment. Under the Old Testament, I had a past to play. Then I could break the covenant. Then I will suffer the punishment. Under the New Testament, I don't have a past to play, so I cannot break it. Glory to God. Hallelujah. The new covenant was between Jesus and the Father. And when Jesus was, was making his arrangement with the Father, all of humanity, past, present, future, was placed in Jesus. So before the foundations of the world, he died for us. Now the covenant that he did on the cross, was actually before the foundation of the world because he collapsed three entities past, present and future into it and made it work. So the new covenant does not have anything to do with me by works but everything to do with me by faith. I'll say it again. The new covenant does not have anything to do with me by works but everything 
to do with me that thing. That means the condition for me to be blessed under the New Testament is not whether I keep the laws or not, it's just my belief in Jesus, then I'm blessed. Mm. Hallelujah. Watch. I don't need to feel own. I don't need to feel righteous. I only need to know I'm holy and I'm righteous. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You know, sometimes you you just feel sad. That's you feeling that you are no longer righteous. Amen. Amen. But when you feel sad, but you know that you are righteous, the sadness goes. Uh -huh. That's right. Do you know why people fall into addictions of all sorts? They are trying to feel that they are righteous and they are holy. Cocaine does that to people. Uh -huh. Alcohol does that to people. Yes, Bad attitude does that to people. You are trying to feel. But when you know that you are righteous, you can never be hooked to anything and get addicted to it. That's the beauty of the New Testament. That's the beauty of the New Covenant. I cannot be addicted to a human factor or an environmental factor when I'm under a better covenant. Guess what? I can only be addicted to the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. That's why I say, don't be drunk with wine. Where is excess? But be drunk with the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I'm under a better covenant. I don't know about you, but I'm under a better covenant. In this covenant, I don't need to walk, but I just reap the benefit by faith. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. The Lord is good. All the time. Hallelujah. The Lord. Let's read, let's read Hebrews, Hebrews 9. Kalibra no shandaka halibra no shandaka. Then said he, Lo, I call. To do the will of God, he takes away the first that he may establish the second. He takes away the first that he may establish the second. Now, my first nature, the old me, is dead and gone. The new me is he. Free from diseases. Free from lack. Free from sicknesses. But guess what? You will not be free from diseases, lack, and sickness when you don't when you don't know how to activate it. Hallelujah. Do you want to know how to activate it? It's activated by faith. Back faith. Back faith. Love our words. 